quite possibly the worst blockbuster since the dawn of human life. Oh my oh, god. No. <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> there is one thing that makes this worth watching with the speakers on mute, and it's the special effects. <laughs> it's Will Smith's smile. <laughs> They're good, but all major film companies can make that work. It's the content that is rubbish. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a terrible take. <laughs> that was a one-star review on IMDb. Hello, and welcome to Spoilers Intended, a podcast about series and films. I'm Stephen, joined as always by Andrew. Hello. And Ryan. Let's kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day a day early. A day early. A day yeah. early. Well, it's yeah. releasing a day early. It's releasing a day early. We're recording this live on July 4th and sending it back in time <laughs> for you to listen to. That's exactly how technology works. Yeah. Because today we're reviewing Independence Day, 1996 blockbuster. Yes. From Roland Emmerich. From Roland Emmerich. That's right. So let's, what, uh, other, what other films did he do? A bunch I'll, of disaster oh, movies. We'll get into it. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. We'll get into it. Uh, but off the top of my head, uh, well, he did Stargate. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. That, right that right makes before this one. Yeah, you can kind of see some sense, of yeah. the DNA. Uh, mm-hmm. The Patriot. D- definitely in the, the ship designs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Day After Tomorrow. Did he do Day After mm-hmm. Tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, 2012. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anytime he's the all, world is ending, he's there. He's, he's like, he's I got you. He's well ready. Yeah. I'm your guy. <laughs> all right. Well, before we, we dive into too many details, it's mm-hmm. gut check time, boys. Got Need some quick opinions on Independence Day. As any other red blooded American, I love this movie. I love this film. As any part of mankind. Yes. I love this film. <laughs> it's no longer just our Independence Day. No, uh, yeah. This is. <laughs> A great movie because it, it reminds me every time I watch it, like how good 90s movies were at doing things that movies nowadays struggle with sometimes. Mm-hmm. Dude, you know, people talk about the nostalgia for 80s movies, mm-hmm. but I start going through some 90s films and it, it's like this cheating, right? I grew up with it. I should be nostalgic yeah. for it, but it's was like, man, these are some good films. The, the 90s, Hollywood hit a stride and it was like, it was before, I, don't, I want to say I saw like an article that was like between you know, the beginning of film in 1999. Yeah like 80% of movies were original ideas. And then from like 2000 to now, it's like 80% are sequels or yeah, remakes, or remakes or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, this is still in that, like mm-hmm. we're going to make something wholly original, not based off a comic book, not it, based yeah, off a hit, property. It had a really good sweet spot. And I think that is kind of the turn of one, the century, but then also technology. Yeah. It was on that edge. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, right. I so liked I'll, it. So I'm going to drop some early trivia on this because we're talking about this being an original idea. Yeah. You know how, <laughs> it was not an original no, idea. Was it? No. Oh. <laughs> you know how original an idea this was? Roland Emmerich and All the way? Dean Devlin were doing uh, publicity interviews. We don't know where, which way this is going. I don't. For Stargate. Uh-huh. And one of the interviewers asked Roland how he felt about doing films about aliens because he doesn't believe in aliens. Okay. And so he literally was just like, well, I mean, imagine if one day you woke up and there are these mile-wide spaceships over every city in the world, and you know, I think if that happened, I would definitely start believing in aliens. And he turned to Dean and was like, I think I just had an idea for our next film. <laughs> write that down. <laughs> TMT, TMT, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write that down in a letter, mail it to yourself. Like, <laughs> it covers us in the copyright office. Uh, but I was, as we already said, this is directed by Roland Emmerich. Yep. Uh, written by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich. Yep. Uh, so Dean and Roland have worked together on a number of films, including Stargate, obviously. Mm hmm. Uh, so this is starring Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, Judd Hirsch, Margaret Collin, Randy Quaid, Brent Spiner, and Vivica Fox. A pretty decent, de- a decent pretty, cast. Pretty good cast. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the film that launches Will Smith's movie career. Really? Yeah, so up to this well, point. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because he was Fresh, Fresh Prince. Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. Bad Boys was before this, right? Mm, no. According to what I saw, they had to basically argue – for him to be the star of this film to, like, the Fox producers. Interesting. To get so him This off. was 96. This is 96. Uh, bad mm. Boys, 95. Mm. So but, directly but, after. The, so, well, but Bad Boys wasn't really that popular of a film, so, though. So we're going to get into this yeah, one. I don't know. Uh, I watched it, but I don't know if, like... Or maybe, right. maybe the that production guy. for this was happening before... Or bad concurrently, concurrently. Yeah, also yeah, concurrent. possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll get into we'll get into some some bits on that as well. Uh, so okay. the music is by David Arnold, who has yep. worked on a lot of Bond films. He did. He has uh, Casino mm-hmm. Royale, World Is Not Enough, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
Die Another Day. Uh, he did Quantum of Solace, I think, I as think well. So. Yeah. I have a bunch of Bond mm. films, along with a lot of other stuff. Uh, so this movie won an Oscar for its special effects. I wonder why. I can't imagine why. Yeah. They look great. <laughs> they did. They look so great. Uh, budget for this was $75 million. Okay. Nice. Is but that adjusted for inflation can, can we, or no? Can we take a guess at what the box office is? Yeah, for this? take a stab. I'm going to say... Is this domestic or worldwide? This is domestic. Domestic, all right. I'm going to say 250. Ryan, what do you got? Domestic, I say 180. Okay. So y'all should know this better than this because this is came up when we did. I know the, it did, yeah. You act like I have a memory. I do, you didn't remember in the episode. <laughs> I so was going to say, this <clears throat> goldfish brain over here, I can't <laughs> keep track of it. Uh, so Independence Day brought in $306 million domestic. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. uh, so that was close ish. For an $817 wow. million dollar worldwide take. Wow, that's crazy. I would think that yeah. the, the U.S. would have the biggest take for that uh, just because the, the world loves Day. action films. Uh, so, this is the highest grossing film of 1996, and at the time, the second highest grossing film of all time behind Jurassic Park. I mean, I believe. Oh, because Titanic hadn't come out yet. No. That was 97, yeah, right? Yeah, 97. Yeah. 97, yeah. yeah. So, at the time, again, huge film. So, yeah. when I say this is, like, what launched Will Smith's career, this mm-hmm. is, like, what, what made him a bona fide. And then he went and makes did money. So you're great saying, classics, like Wild Wild West. Well, he did Men in Black. <laughs> Mickey Wow Wow. You're I, saying, I know he did. But you're saying Bad Boys didn't make $900 million worldwide. It made $141 million. Oh, okay. Total? Oh, total. Okay. <laughs> you pulled that out real quick. <laughs> no, it was, it he was, was looking, just he was okay. looking it up. I'm actually a really big Bad Boys <laughs> yeah. fan. Just the original film. I'm, I'm what they call the Bad Boys archivist. <laughs> 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 All right. So with that said, let's get into some spoiler-free thoughts on Independence Day. Boys? Yeah. Um, this movie, again, like I said earlier, it does so much right where, like, newer movies don't. Mm-hmm. And I think you have... A really good cast of characters. You have, I think, almost perfect pacing in the movie because it does such a good job. It never really feels like it's, like, dragging. So I did not believe that this movie was two and a half hours long. Right. If you had asked me, I'd say it's just under two hours because this movie feels like it just books it. It just goes. Think about how, like, in the opening scenes, they introduce you to every main faction and group of characters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Before anything even happens, you have like an amuse bouche of like who they are, you, what their whole you know, deal who they is, are, what's going on, well, where and, they yeah, are. You, yeah. you learn so much about every single character very quickly, yeah. based on how one they're reacting to things or just the type of conversations that they're having. And it's very rare that you see newer films be able to pull this off with, uh, I'll say, a big cast of characters. No, it feels like when when you have a larger cast nowadays. It, what happens is something gets lost and like one character's not developed enough or mm-hmm. they had to cut Everyone some scene out. Line. So there's a plot hole of like, oh, how did this guy get there? I guess he teleported. Whereas here it's like, you get introduced to everybody. Mm-hmm. Then you see how everyone reacts to the ship showing up. Then you yeah. see how everyone acts to the destruction. Then you see everyone doing their thing in the aftermath. And it, as it goes through the, the whole plot of the movie, you get an even amount or like, it's probably not dead even, but like, but it, yeah. it feels, it feels even. It feels even in the sense that for everybody you're introduced to, you know what you need to know about them. Right. Well, and I think the I think one of the good things about this is the plot itself is bone simple. Sure. There's no there's no like overt like like they there's no exposition. I mean, no, there's yeah. no there's no need to say this is America in yeah. the mid 1990s. You know, like you just know where what's happening. Right. Yeah. And the aliens don't have like some kind of convoluted complex. No, they're plot just they're just there for extermination. Sequences yeah. of like the alien queen ordering soldiers around, mm-hmm. and right. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, just like that. That's the noise aliens make. It but is. But then also <laughs> the special effects, which. I, I think are fantastic because it's when I was a kid, I thought they like, did they actually blow up the white house? Oh yeah. It <laughs> was like, oh, God. The, the real practical effects. It's the mixture of early CG compositing a bunch of stuff that was keyed yeah. out on blue screen and models that they, you know, built to explode yeah. or whatever. Well, and that <laughs> looks great. Like, especially in 96, you know, and like, like, well, and that's kind of what I was talking about is like, this is like the perfect amalgamation of like right at the turn of the century with yeah. technology to where it's still very much in the practical sense and CGI exists because they were very proud yeah. of it and behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. But it's definitely one of those where like, this is just one more piece to the puzzle for us. This isn't the only thing that we rely on to make the film. Right. One, it's like, okay, we have the 
technology to model and animate a plane flying, mm-hmm. but we don't have the simulations in place yet to do the all processing the fire power effects mm-hmm. to do the splintering of a building mm-hmm. as it explodes. Yeah, and there's like, too many moving parts for that one. Yeah, yeah. so for that, it's like we got to shoot that practically, and mm-hmm. they did a great job with all the models. Yeah, the miniature the work. Oh, the the miniature work is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. there is it, one real plane in this entire film. Oh, wow, really? And it's the crop duster. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be the crop duster. Yeah. I would love to see, like, what percentage of the planes are models shot on blue screen versus I think most CG. of the F-18s are models. Most most of the stuff in the air is, is, is CGI. CGI. Yeah. yeah, right. But, like, when it's on the ground, it's Yeah, because this wasn't, yeah. like, Top Gun where they went and got, like, actual footage no. of the F-18s doing <laughs> no. stuff. But I'll say this, too. Like, I, th- I feel like this movie... <laughs> they reuse it because they only had so much footage to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another thing in the pro column for me for this movie is, like, how just satisfying of an arc the story takes. Because even though the plot isn't complicated, it's just... Just this like well, I don't know. It never. I think it, it's got it's got just a little bit enough with each character where they have yeah. you have the main plot for everyone, right? Aliens problems, but you also have their own little sidebar of their life. Well, and yeah. they all all of those sidebars have their own resolution. Yeah, yeah. They all, they, like I really think a good example of that is Jeff Goldblum's character and his his ex wife. Their arc, like of just for them personally, of like their yeah. relationship, makes actual sense. Once yeah. you see the reason why they split up and just kind of how the just the way it plays yeah. out, yeah, like it just everything it feels this, natural, it feels real. Well, yeah. they convey so much about their relationship, not in a ham-fisted like in your face kind of yeah, way. Yeah, it's like, well, you left me because of blah. Right. It's yeah. it's like it happens matter of factly mid conversation because and because yeah. they're talking about other plot points that actually matter to the general plot, but then you get these side like character building moments with them when yeah. they're talking, but in a conversation that has nothing to do with them specifically. Well, and you can just see the body language oh, and how man. they carry themselves. But, but mm-hmm. also like but, yeah. this film is full of some great lines and this specific oh, yeah. scenario I was thinking of, well, I want to be part of something special. I, well, I thought I was. Yeah. It's just like, it's oh, like, oh, dagger. <laughs> so this is something that I'll say. I, after watching, rewatching this, decided to watch Independence Day Resurgence. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this the is the 20 years later uh, sequel. So what year do you think that came out? Uh, 2021. Steven? It was like 2017 or 2016. 2016. No. What? Yeah, Thank 20, you. It was 20 years later. Thank you, Andrew. I, literally what I said. Yeah. 20 years later. I had this moment. 20 years later. I know. I was like, what was that? Like right after the pandemic? Yeah. Like, yeah. In my head. Because I remember seeing the trailer for it in theaters yeah. and be like, mm, mm. And so in my head, it was very recent. I, yeah. I went to find it and it was only on yeah, Tubi. You got that, that COVID um, brain where you can't remember. Yeah. Before there's four and years I was of like, lost time. 2016? <laughs> but it is... Not worth watching. I'll say that first yeah. off. That's, Roland Emmerich surprise. directs it, mm-hmm. and they get Jeff Goldblum. They get a lot of the Bill original Pullman, cast back. Yeah, a lot of people back. The problem it has, and what makes this so much better, is that there's no charm at mm-hmm. all in the movie. Like this just has a almost undefinable well, like got, it factor. It's got, it's got yeah. charm. It's got heart. I, I, that's yeah. the one that gets me for a lot of well, 90s I, movies. I think it's not even that passion. Maybe that's passion it. of the Maybe production. that's it. But yeah. there's there's a lot of '90s films where it's like the the concept is very just bare bones, basic, yeah. simple. Yeah. But then it's injected with a little something extra, and you're just like, ah, oh, this just hits. Mm-hmm. But like the plot of Resurgence, mm-hmm. right, is very much similar to this one, just same, same, but different. Yeah. It's kind of like um, Force Awakens to A New Hope. It's like, it's not the same exact thing, but the yeah. bones. Yeah, they, they're, yeah, yeah they the, all line up the same. Yeah. So it's, it's the spark notes. It is, and the problem is like, when you try to match this beat for beat like that, mm-hmm. you can see that, well, this beat's not as good as the old beat. Yeah. yeah. This beat's not as good as the old. And like, so they have a whole new cast of characters they introduce mm-hmm. to try to like, they were trying to make this they're, they're launch a, the universe, a, a yeah. universe right? cinematic universe. And it ends on a whole like, okay, that never <laughs> happened. But <laughs> they were hoping, I think, that like Liam Hemsworth and like the other mm-hmm. cast of characters would like take over and then they yeah. could like usher out Jeff Goldblum. Well, and, and, and this is the problem. I mean, that's just the problem with modern yeah. uh, Hollywood is yeah. that the only thing that they care about right. is because can, of streaming this, and all this other kind of stuff. Launch the next one. They need to have yeah. more films because DVD sales and other that kind of stuff doesn't exist because everyone has to have a streaming platform now and you right. don't make money off streaming. Well, and, and to the to the the special effects point, right? Like mm. the new one, the 2016 research, it's, it's all CGI course, and yeah. it's like the most bog standard, like kind of like generic CGI mm-hmm. that like, I don't know. It, the, the ship designs still look like, it looks like I, it's from the same the, the universe. Yeah. Ship designs were so good. Right. They were. It's hard to mess up. I remember up. all the toys. 
that yeah. that came out around that time. Like yeah. you had like the big, um, like the the little fighter or whatever that they had. Yeah, like yeah, shuffle yeah, yeah. discs or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, the new one not great on any level. It's well. <laughs> It, well, Jeff Goldblum does great in it. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Goldblum. It's Jeff Goldblum. He's just a good not? actor, and he's in it surprisingly a, a lot of it. So like, I'm glad they didn't like sideline him. So if he shows see, up and he really gets blown away, yeah. <laughs> but it, it it was I watched the whole thing because it was interesting to just see compared to the old one like yeah. what they did, and it was it was there was just a lot of weird production stuff that I was like, wow, this. I like so a, a good example in this movie, you were saying like people have really good lines. Mm. You know what I mean? And like people deliver lines that in my head, I'm like on paper, this, that's, this hits. Yeah. that's just as cheesy or just as good as something that they would have done in the 96 independence mm-hmm. day. Right. But it just doesn't work now. Yeah. And I don't know <laughs> if it's because of the delivery or because of the tone of the movie, or if it's like, did we outgrow saying cheesy lines? No, because when yeah. you hear it in independence day, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know. No, it's, like, well, it's not even that because there's nostalgia tied to that. We're not going to give that any kind of daylight, but oh, come on now. No, the, daylight. Like, no, no. Only if, we, if we move over Back to, to a modern film, like I'll say mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons hat. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that has corny lines, Great lines that hit because it is intended to be a fun film where I, I haven't seen resurgence. But it feels I like just assume that it, it, well, one is a cash in, but it's trying to probably take itself too seriously. Probably. To a degree. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it does feel like there's the same spirit there, but like it just, it was a pale comparison in, mm-hmm. compared to this movie where just so, so many things, things are. So right. I know we're gushing about it, yeah. and I, I, you can definitely tear apart a lot of like really miniature spots in the plot well, and well, the story of like that are happening. You could definitely see that it's you know, almost a 30-year-old film, right? Yeah, I mean, there, the there's C- a couple. The CGI is... Not perfect in the compositing. Yeah. You could be like, mm, the, the the dog fight at the end that they were very proud about at the time doesn't look that great. It doesn't look wonderful anymore, but it's yeah. still like the. It doesn't look time. terrible though. It doesn't no. look terrible. It's really just the the speed at which everything is happening. Yeah. It's just it feels like everything's kind of in molasses, but well, that's the, slow. Like the speed yeah. and also the the scale of it because it's so tight packed. Yes, and the yeah. speed at which they shoot me, the feel past this, feel yes. past that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the other thing is too, is like there's some like super cheesy moments that always just make me laugh. Is like whenever um, I can't remember her name is running with the dog in the um, boomer, yeah, in the in the tunnel with the explosion Dude, on them. That moment rules. <laughs> <laughs> Boomer's such a good boy. He jumps off like two or three cars and he does hops a good, in the flaming. Parkour, I was like, parkour. This rules. He does a good job. Also though, Boomer. Why are you just hanging out while they run down he, the... Like, he's like the big explosion. He's just chilling. He's like, I'll wait with the car. Where, where are y'all going? Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> it's still running. Do I, I'll stay here then. No. Did you leave the keys? I mean, yeah. like, those are important. We've got all of our stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> My treats. <laughs> in less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution. But from annihilation, we're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. I don't know about y'all, but after that, I'm so hyped up I could run right through that spoiler wall. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah! In fact, I think we will. So that's it. We're going in. <laughs> yeah. No ad break. You just get no to listen break. to Bill yeah. Pullman it's give one of the one, greatest one movie of the speeches. Most inspiring speeches ever in just a summer blockbuster. The middle of a summer blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so let's jump into some trivia and let's kick it off. Let's talk about that speech. Yeah. Okay. So I got to find it in my notes. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Okay. So the final sentence of his speech, today is our Independence Day, mm-hmm. was not originally in the script. It was added at the last minute before filming in an attempt to convince 20th Century Fox not to avoid a legal battle to earn the right to name the film Independence Day. Interesting. What would, what would so, the legal battle be? Well, the okay. production was nicknamed ID4 throughout its production because Warner Brothers owned the rights to the title Independence Day. Oh, weird. Whoa. Yeah, because they had they had released a film or they had the rights to a film titled Independence oh. Day. So they were trying to convince 20th Century Fox, like, hey, we need this title. Y'all need to go in and you'll pay the money or mm-hmm. fight the legal right. It it's out. just Get not it, a yeah. it's not a copyrighted name mm-hmm. or whatever. And so they put it in there, and the uh, the writer uh, Devlin and Emmerich were like, "Yeah, when when the producers see that in the dailies, they're gonna be like, man, we need that name.' <laughs> I mean, you do. It's it's a hype speech. Well, it's one of those things where at the time you're like, oh, cool, they got the name of the movie in there. But then hearing about, well, no, it's how they got the name of the movie on the title yeah. in there. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was the reverse. It was. So it's a whoopsie daisy. Uh, so the U.S. military agreed to support the film by allowing base access. Consulting actors, uh, extras, uniforms, etc. Access to Area 51. Oh, all yeah, sorts yeah. Of stuff. Stuff. Like well, full, they brought in all the RVs. <laughs> yeah. so, you, you bring Brent Spiner in here, <laughs> we'll let you right in the door. <laughs> well, after the studio refused to remove the Area 51 references, the military withdrew their support. <laughs> 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 Too bad. We can't take it out. So It's pivotal to the plot. <laughs> it so, is. So to play along with that, because they're very protective about Area 51, right? Mm-hmm. In the briefing room scene that takes place at Area 51, mm-hmm. there is actual footage of Area 51 being played in the background. Oh, like really? A security camera that was taken by a conspiracy theorist. Oh, man. From a place called Freedom Ridge that overlooks the Oh, base. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, yeah. The okay. U.S. government has since taken over that land. Wow. Yeah, because I, I remember, like, yeah, back in, like, the 80s or 90s or whatever, like, you could actually, you could actually see, see yeah. the it, air base. It was, like, late 90s. They, like, were like, okay, yeah. we're going to, we own that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so I told you before the spoiler break about how this idea kind of came up in an, in an interview, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the script was written in four weeks. It was sent out to studios on a Thursday. They had offers the next day, and the film was in pre-production on Monday. Oh, wow. wow. If you ever wanted to feel like you haven't accomplished anything, what if they, in like a six-week turnaround, started creating the second highest grossing film at the time? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, That's crazy. Lord. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, so Dean Devlin, the writer or co-writer, wanted the alien invasion to be on a massive scale mm-hmm. because up to that point, he really hated how in alien invasion films, the aliens are always depicted as landing and then just hanging out in some cornfield. Yeah. Right. So the, the push was, let's, let's make this big. Like an actual invasion. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the film holds the record for the most miniature work to appear in one film. Oh, wow. Nice. Really? Yes. And Even over a Star Wars? Yes. And it's assumed that it will not, record will not be broken because of the rise and prevalence of CGI. Right. So huh. it's, it's borderline an untouchable record because as the, the model shop I guess maybe because this was like the last really big mm-hmm. model think about, action think film. Think about the prequels come out and it's just pure Yeah, and it's all CGI because yeah. George Lucas. Yeah. Uh, huh. So the, the model shop supervisor estimated that there's roughly two movies worth of miniatures used in the film. Wow. Wow. Just because they did so much. So much work. of it, yeah. Well, because, again, like I said, there's one real plane in this film, and it's the, the biplane crop duster. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. else is they, a model. Because they, they actually just shot it. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you, you can find a biplane crop duster. <laughs> there's laying around, man. Yeah. There's two in the driveway here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so production designer Patrick, I'm going to butcher his last name, Tatopoulos. 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 Try again. Uh, Tatopoulos. <laughs> One more. T-A-T-O-P-O-U-L-U-S. Okay. Uh, he presented Emmerich with two concepts for the aliens. Uh, one ended up being the actual aliens, and the other ended up being their biomechanical Bio, Yeah, suits. I was going to say, because yeah. it, it's two different, oh, wow. it's two very stylized, like, mm-hmm. looks, and I like both of them. Yeah. So yeah. Emmerich wanted the aliens to be unique and original, but something that's recognizably alien. Alien, yeah. 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 Uh, so Will Smith's line... What is that smell? Uh, is ad libbed entirely, nice. and is actually a complaint because they are filming near the Great Salt Lake on the salt flats, and so the Great Salt Lake has its own like species of little brine shrimp. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And if there's like, if it floods for any reason, they wash up and then they die and they decay on the shoreline. So it's just the smell of dead shrimp that he's smelling. Oh, wow. (laughs) So it actually smelled (laughs) terrible. That's awesome, though. Uh, They also, the the cast and crew also all got sunburns on the salt flats, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. despite wearing like long sleeves and pants, because the The, the the light off the the sand is so strong that it was shining up into their pant legs and burning their legs. Oh, wow. Right? That's crazy. That is crazy. mm. I didn't think about that. (laughs) It's a big reflector. Yeah, it really is. It really is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, So the alien spacecraft in Area 51 was a full-scale model. Measured 65 feet wide. I was going to say, so it's a yeah. one-to-one. Yeah. Well, it was huge. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, you know, Goldblum's putting his hands on it. Like, mm-hmm. it was, yeah, mm-hmm. they definitely built. That That's awesome. awesome. Where's right? that at? I don't know, man. It's, it's probably, it's probably it's taken air, down. It's Put it in the Smithsonian. <laughs> uh, to the shock of no one, uh, most of Jeff Goldblum's dialogue was ad-libbed. Not, wow. not surprising. What do you he's, know? He's very, he's very much gold, Jeff Goldblum. He is. It, he is. it works, though. Yeah. Well, speaking of very much Jeff Goldblum, there is a, uh, I'm going to put the link in the, um, episode description, mm-hmm. but there is a making of Independence Day, like a feature, twenty eight minute. It, ha- it clip had to on be YouTube. just like broadcast. It TV. had to be like yeah. on Fox something. or Discovery mm-hmm. Channel or something. Yeah. Uh, but it's hosted by Jeff Goldblum, being incredibly Jeff Goldblum. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's it's amazing. So I have, but a, it also gets into we watched a little gets, bit of it. Before it gets we into all the model work and yeah. just the, the the crazy stuff they're doing to make these scenes come together. It's yeah. it's yeah. really a great the, thing to watch. The thing that stuck out to me was the the explosion. How like it you know, doesn't come down a street naturally, so they turn the model you know Ver- they had to vertical. hang it vertically yeah. Vertical, yeah. so that fire rises and they put the camera on the ceiling shooting down at it. I was like, that's wild. I yeah. would have never thought to no, Yeah, done. like never, like you're like, oh, how do I fix this problem of fire rising? Yeah. I just rotate everything well, else. Well, the, the yeah. fire <laughs> rises regardless. What if we just make the street vertical? Yeah, which is fantastic. That's just yeah. such a great piece of problem solving. Yeah. yeah. So I have, a, I have a quick story. Okay. So I saw this movie in theaters halfway. What halfway. do you mean halfway? Yeah, so I was 12 oh. at the time. Oh, did the, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, okay. so I was 12 at the time, and, um, you know, movies coming out on 4th of July weekend or yeah. whatever, and my dad and my dad takes me to go see it, and I'm watching it, and I'm really enjoying it, but yeah. then um, me being 12 years old, the alien really scared me. At 12? Yeah. Well, no, this, <laughs> I had just, I had just like, seen uh, <laughs> I had just seen Jurassic Park for the first time. Uh-huh. This is also terrifying. At 12? Velociraptors. <laughs> Uh, okay, hey, look, just because your parents <laughs> allow you to watch, like, <laughs> my, Ninja my, Scroll My little brother went to old. see the, with me in theaters, and he was, like, he was born in 87. Look, I had an overactive right. imagination. He was, like, anyway, six years old. Let me finish my story. <laughs> Continue. Sorry, I'm taking it back. Ryan's like, you merely adopted the terror. I was <laughs> yeah. born in it, molded by yeah, it. Yeah, so... Yeah. So we basically get to the point in the film whenever um, Data or, or the actor for Brent Data, Spiner. Brent Spiner, yeah, Brent Spiner is um, doing the autopsy on mm-hmm. the the alien, and then obviously like he gets taken over and stuff. Yeah. And then, um, I was so scared whenever he gets slapped up against the, the glass. The glass yeah. I had to leave. Like I was like in like hysterics. I couldn't. I couldn't handle it. Wow. I don't know why. And then you know because watching it now, I'm like, how was I scared? About I'd like this? to interview the people sitting behind you. <laughs> <laughs> this twelve year old loses yeah, his, his, his ever loving mind. Uh, so I didn't even actually get to see the second half of the film oh, until like bits. it came out on DVD. Or VHS. VHS, VHS yeah, VHS, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, again, what's time? But, right. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking, so, so you waited like, <laughs> like yeah, 2000 on Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't I didn't get to see it until we could rent it because right. obviously my dad's not going to go pay for another ticket. For no, me. <laughs> yeah. you burned that fridge, Andrew. <laughs> this little brat of a kid made me miss the rest of my movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Which I love this movie now. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, but yeah. it's just, it's hilarious to think of like, I had to just like leave. Do you remember making kind of like crazy noise or like a screech or was it just what? you just vamped? Did you just like run out and you're no, dead? Go, 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 go. Okay. Who knows? Did, okay. did you just say over and over again, must go faster, must go faster? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my Independence Day. <laughs> Uh, I, that that sequence has one of my favorite lines in it too, where they're like, "Is that glass bulletproof?" No, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Adam Baldwin, I think, is that yeah. actor. Yeah, he's like, "No, sir." And then they just start firing. Just, <laughs> which, as a kid, when that came up, when he asked that question, I was like, "Why would he ever?" Oh, wow. They like they were 
just ready to go on that. Okay. <laughs> but then I remember, like, especially on rewatching, you know, like when you watch this movie, like that being like, why would that not be bulletproof? <laughs> you know, right? like, yeah. Huh. Because because they're supposed to be autopsy dead things. I guess. Yeah. yeah. But so, th- there's so many moments in, in the movie, in the plot of this movie that are like, really, we wouldn't be like a little more dialed in on some of this. Like it comes, you know, from behind the moon mm-hmm. and it's like a telescope can see it. You could see it with your naked eye at that point. If yeah. it's that close and everybody's like, president's like, what is it? They're like, I don't know. It's some big thing. I mean, <laughs> it's slowing down weird. Anyways, let's keep going about our lives. I'm so like, what's, so what's what? about Monica Lewinsky? <laughs> yeah. Like everybody's just like doing their thing. And like they're, they said split apart into how many pieces? Hey, let's see how this plays out. <laughs> it's like, just, well, yeah. Cause like you would, you'd be able to see basically everything yeah right yeah yeah and act like you don't see it till it breaks through the atmosphere and i'm like it's no. what, like like hundreds of com- kilometers across. gotta be it's as big as new york it's, it's 500 yeah. kilometers across things so well say. not the the mothership the mothership yeah, yeah the the small ones are 12 kilometers yeah but still yeah she's yeah. still huge but even still then, huge. yeah it's massive like you'd be able to see it so naked so eye. Going, yeah going back to the sequence right where, where brent spiner is uh, take it over and then they gun the yeah. alien down right yeah so when that scene was shown to test audiences they didn't like it because they didn't feel like the alien suffered enough. So they actually went back and reshot the sequence where uh, Adam Baldwin walks up to and, it and, and shoots double it off, taps and double it, taps yeah. it on the ground to make people feel better about the fact that the alien, yeah, we got that alien. Wow. <laughs> That's aw- like, That's can you amazing. imagine like a test dying? He's like, no, this isn't good this, enough. We need not, more bloodshed this, and not, suffering. Not what are hurting enough. They're, we don't know that it's dead. What a was, weird note to have to give. To well, <laughs> but it's also, it kind of makes sense because it's like, well, the alien, we thought it was dead and then it wasn't. And then we always just saw it get shot a couple times. We don't know that it's dead. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, we're going to establish, hey, this sucker is dead. Right. Yeah. Because I guess if you're thinking of it from like any kind of horror movie, it's like confirm the killer or else it's going to sit back up mm-hmm. in the background. Right. Yeah. 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 They're like standing around talking like, so do you think that a uh, scientist is okay? I don't know. In the background just rises up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so another sequence that was shot and ultimately replaced in the film, the final battle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, over area 51. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With Randy Quaid flying into the, the gun. Yeah. Right. Right. Initially, the whole way it played out is he was turned down to be a pilot because he's too drunk. Oh, wow. And he straps a missile to his biplane, and he flies the biplane into it. I kind of like that. So <laughs> test, so audiences actually really liked it for the comedy of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it wasn't Ro- the big heroic Roland moment. They want it to Roland be. Roland wanted it to be. A sacrifice, a sacrifice that happens yeah. in the moment, not that this drunk idiot decided he just oh I'll put a put a missile on and fly into it. It right. wanted to be a conscious choice. Yeah. So they went back and, and well, and I that. think I, that really hits better because I think his his whole storyline with his family is definitely the weakest out of the whole it film. Gi- but it gives it a lot but more. It, it gives yeah. it the the but big punch at the end. It ends the strongest yeah. out of all the like, yeah. you know, like which is just wild. I know it's like because you you kind of care about it a little You're bit. Like ah, you know. Yeah. Also, I I do always every time I'm always cracking up with the. When they're talking about, you know, uh, who all can fly, mm-hmm. you know, and Randy Quaid's like, I just want to say on a side note, I was abducted. And everybody gives him like, a, oh, OK, it's like, there's aliens right <laughs> here. <laughs> we see it. You, you know can they're see real. it with your eyes right now. Like, why? And everyone should be like, please tell us everything, everything you know. You know. <laughs> yeah. like, Instead of like, you're this a valuable, bird, and you're you're a like, valuable resource. You should have said that two days ago. No kidding. Yeah, we promote you to vice president. Like instead, <laughs> he's, They're like, OK, buddy. And I'm like, what's it going to take for you to believe this guy? <laughs> um, but yeah, like he, he, he's got the crop dusting thing. He's, he's alcoholic. Mm-hmm. His kids, which you learn like one of their names, maybe two. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not super, again, it's not super well fleshed out. It's not, but you get the vibe. You're like, these kids are frustrated, but they love their dad, you know, and he's yeah. like trying to help them. And then, so you're kind of rooting for him to turn a corner. And yeah. then when he does, and he makes that sacrifice, it always gets me. I'm like, oh, this is actually really good. Like yeah. it's, it surprised me the first time I rewatched this after like, I, I saw this a lot as a kid. I saw, I've seen this film yeah. so many times. And then I hadn't probably haven't seen it in almost a decade at this point. Oh really? So, so I, yeah, I watched it last independence day with my uh, nephew. Cause he'd never seen gonna, it. I want to be watching. I'm going to listen to this podcast episode. When it comes out and be like, I want to fire up this movie. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was last year. My, my brother and him came down. Um, maybe it was the year before last, maybe it was two years ago. Either way. But they, they came down to stay with us for 4th of July and uh, we were trying to figure out what to watch on TV. And I was like, you ever seen independence oh, day? Kind of a slam dunk question is that. <laughs> yeah. And we watched it. He, 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 Stuck with it for the most part. He was seven at the time. Mm-hmm. And like, 
he got bored because it is a 90s movie. It's slow. It doesn't it start has, with an action scene. It has scene. slow bits at the start, and in the middle, it slows down a little. Yeah, and so anytime it slowed down, he would like kind of lose a little interest, but like anytime the aliens were on screen, th- he was like, this rules. You know, like this is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like the... Um, the thing I was going to say is like with, with Randy Quaid's part, right? That was the first time I had seen it probably in like a decade before mm-hmm. that. Cause I, again, the nineties, I rented it or watched it like on TNT, like all well, it was the time. on like TNT. Also, I, was, I was 10. It was 1996. What is math? He was seven. He was fine with yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, no. But I was <laughs> <laughs> not going to let you live that one down. Anyways. Um, <laughs> he's probably seen Attack on Titan by now. It's fine. I, ah, no, he's watching My Hero Academia. That's about as far as he's gotten. He loves Dragon Ball. Um, good, good, good uh, taste there. Yeah, it's yeah, not too bad. So no. far, not we're trying to guide Dragon him. Ball? <laughs> no, no, my hero. Oh, okay. I'm oh, okay. Dragon Ball now. No, Dragon Ball's great. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, what a take. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, it's only okay. You <laughs> know. I've got a few yeah. models in my house, but whatever. Yeah, Who cares? You know, whatever. <laughs> uh, what was I say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it had been a long time since I saw it, and when it got to the the end, I remembered you know Randy mm-hmm. Quaid doing it. I got choked up a little bit because I was like, man, he's actually like. He pulled his life together just in time to like yeah. make this sacrifice. He's Tell telling his kids, kids, "I love them." And then very his kids much. like listening. And I was like, "Oh, uh. yeah, And yeah. then he's like, "You should be proud of your dad." He's like, "I am." And you're like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> full resolution." Uh. Uh, yeah. What does this feel like? Uh. But yeah, that that that's a, a good example because you got like you know Will Smith's uh, Captain Hiller, Captain Stephen Hiller, his you know arc with his wife and like reuniting with them is good it's it but, but it's, that's the thing they there was never a time in question where like they wouldn't be together well, well there was right. no there was no real conflict the, there, yeah there wasn't really. really conflict it was really more just like hey you left on independence day weekend mm-hmm. on your vacation it's like hey aliens are invading what yeah, am i hey, going to do hey i'm a serving <laughs> military officer called up to you know right, right, sort yeah. of, like yeah i'm gonna have to leave <laughs> but and at the beginning of their whole the kickoff of their thing i do love when he goes to get the paper and he's oh, like looking great. around and everybody's like freaking out and he's like y'all okay and he looks up and sees it that's he's like oh whole sequence well, and the best part too is that you still don't even see it until she comes out and then you see yeah. it from their perspective it's a good little bit because like, yeah. yeah um but like to that to that point with them like even though it, they don't go a lot of places with that necessarily, it's still satisfying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like all the arcs end in like a very satisfying way. Well, and I think another piece of it that really works is all of our different characters are vastly different people from vastly different yeah. walks of life. Like we, we put his wife with uh, the first lady. Right. Yeah. Who and does they, not make it, which is like, which is, which which, is, yeah, which is surprising. Pretty, yeah. Which is pretty crazy call in and of itself. But we also have like the little bit with them where she's like, well, what do you do? Oh, I'm a dancer. Oh, I love ballet. Like, not that, <laughs> not that kind of dancer. Not that kind of dancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like you have these moments of little bits of comedy in it, yeah. in their interactions, mm-hmm. but you still get to see this because you get the, the two of them, you get, you know, Randy Quaid's character and his family. Uh, you get the little kids, you get uh, his, I, I well, assume he, it's his son, or I'm not sure if it's adopted it's, or not. No, I think it's her son. It's her it's son. Her son. Yeah, her son. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the 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 little boy mm-hmm. with the president's daughter. Well, and then you have Jeff Goldblum and his dad. And his dad. Oh, yeah. So his dad yeah. reminds me a lot of my grandfather. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's that that very um, you know Eastern European Russian stu- like just Jewish guy. Yeah, from yeah. New York. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. like, yeah, he he. To a degree, he's playing kind of a stereotype. Oh, very much. You know what I mean? But like, he's, but he's playing it incredibly well. But he's Judd Hirsch. He's going to nail it. He's, he's, he's nail great it, yeah. at everything. Yeah. But like the dynamic that they have between him and and then you know Jeff Goldblum as as David is just like great. Well, I mean, I think that's probably part of it too. Like the chemistry in this film is pretty phenomenal across the board. Like once you put like at at face value, if you say, hey, this film, your two main male leads are Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum, and they're going to play off each other. Mm-hmm. Like that... Which they actually really don't get a ton to play off of each other but for, it's still for no. time. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's still, yeah. like, the, the whole bit when they're in the mothership mm-hmm. uh, is is great, just across the board. Yeah. Um, ignoring the, the the concept of a computer virus into a... Into an alien race. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it's a, it's, it's a whole play... They're, they're running off of Windows 95 at that well, point. Well, the, yeah. the, the thing well, that that's they... that's an Apple computer. <laughs> they, power book. They do roughly <laughs> establish, though, that they're able to use our satellite, so at the very least, they the communicate technology through does. binary. So yeah. it's, it's one of these things where it's questionable, but at the same time, 
Area 51 has had a ship. They've been studying this for right. Yeah, so yeah. hypothetically, like, there's a way still to interface. It's plausible it. where it's like, hey, we have to interface a laptop with alien technology. It's like, while surrounded by all the resources of Area 51, who've had one of these things for 60 years. Yeah, or, right. You know, yeah. like yeah. it's at least not a horrible. No, leap. you can make the leap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do. Uh, I love too that the. Uh, uh, Constance, who is his ex-wife and the aide to mm-hmm. the president. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at it, like, upon this rewatch, I was noticing that, like, she basically delays so much by just not talking to him on the phone. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. I'm like, hold on. If she had just answered the phone and, like, be like, and, what's going on? And he'd be like, mm-hmm. it's a, it, we've got six hours. They could have evacuated so well, many more people. So many people could have been well, alive I'll, if she wasn't petty. Yeah. Well, for, well, I don't even think it's really, I don't even really think it's petty there. No. I really think it, it's down to the fact that clearly, like, whenever um, Bill Pullman's character was on the campaign, they yeah. were together. Right. And essentially, like, clearly there was a big, um, big problem with him and Jeff Goldblum's character. Yeah. So because of that, she's just like, I don't need to talk to you. Like, what are we what are we doing here? Right. Like, because clearly, this is still a pretty new breakup, even though it's still it's three, three years. years yeah. But like, that's it's, still, but I mean, that still could be very fresh. Yeah. My thing, though, is that like if uh, he's an MIT as an adult, three years is a very short time. <laughs> <laughs> she should know that he's smart enough to have caught something. And if he's like, I, I don't disagree. No, I don't no, disagree. No, I mean, yeah. If we're trying to punch hole, like, there's not a ton of room to well, punch It's not holes even really a hole. It's just an observation. Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's still yeah. a very bone simple plot. It's like, man, but, if she'd answered that phone. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking about how bone simple it is, going back to uh, the whole putting a computer virus in, mm-hmm. it's just a play on War of the Worlds, where yeah, the aliens are defeated yeah. by a biological a cold, yeah. virus, mm-hmm. and right. now they're defeated yeah. by a man made virus. Yeah. I yeah, do love but, um, that uh, <laughs> Harvey Firestein's in this when he's like, David, I gotta call my lawyer. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's freaking out and then he doesn't make it out of the I city. Know. And you're just like, oh man. He he actually drops an F bomb in it that they had to they remove. Edited that. Yeah, you can tell. It's because otherwise the film would have been R. It's about uh, the lawyer. He's like, yeah. Yeah. forget that guy. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, that's probably what you said. <laughs> so the um the actually probably the only thing that is unrealistic about this is, and I they do kind this of is a mention, bold statement. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, okay, is right. them getting from New York to Washington D.C. without just being I, I stopped knew, by? I knew it was going to be a traffic. traffic. I knew it was going to yeah. be a traffic. So commentary. I looked it up on Google Maps because, like, again, upon this rewatch, it's, it's I was like, it is no, it's doable. It's four hours without, and forty-four minutes is what it said. Panic-induced. Right. Apocalypse traffic. Right, that's the problem. But that's the they problem. They do comment that like we're the only ones going, going into, into the city. Yeah, that, that, yeah, they do address it. But I mean, like but they're yeah. not so, going into the city for four hours. So, right, so there yeah. was actually trivia about it that the the time lag between mm-hmm. what you see on the clock when he leaves yeah. to when they're in the White House mm-hmm. is accurate for about how long it would take to make the trip. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So they actually, like, they again, they paid attention to these kind of things. Yeah, it's just, yeah. like, it's just one of those. It's just the like, panic it's still just in a yeah. full apocalyptic, aliens have arrived and they're over all the cities. It doesn't matter that you're the only people driving in. That road is full of people still using it to go out. Do, yeah, that, that's the right. thing. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah. No one is yeah. going to be following the rules yeah, to right. get out of, yeah, no. like, yeah. It takes 12 hours to make that trip on back roads and you had to, you know, siphon gas out of an abandoned gas station. Well, or like so that. if you yeah. do and go watch like World of the Worlds, like the the new one with the Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise one, yeah. uh, they do address like just how absurd like the panic is. Oh, sure. When, yeah. it, when it comes to this kind of stuff. So and like, I mean, I've been to a shuttle launch and been stuck in five hour traffic on a 45 minute drive back. Right. Oh, like, man, I'll do you one better. I've been to a. There was no panic there. I've been to an Auburn <laughs> football game. I was going to say, where it takes four hours to get of back concerts. from Auburn to here. <laughs> yeah, but that's two hours to get down there. No, You're just it's, doubling it's, your time. I quadrupled mine. Yeah. Well, but, but as long as first, we're measuring. The, first, <laughs> the problem is the first hour and a half of that trip is what it takes you to get from the parking lot to the interstate. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're stumbling around. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're um, in their cars. Uh. Get out of there. Uh, get out of the way. Yeah, I, I feel like this movie, you know, yeah, you can you can poke some holes and stuff, but it's, it is a enjoyable surface level look at like the best, like the best popcorn action version of an alien invasion. That you it really just is. About get. It's just, it's really well done. It's a solid across movie. Across the board, yeah. Well, and like I was comparing it to the new one, Resurgence, right? There's so many plot holes in that one. And it's like... Characters, you know, characters that, or, like, there's teleport. Like, and, and this is a spoiler, but who cares? Don't watch Independence Day <laughs> Resurgence. 
Or there's like they do. These, oh, uh, these, not your dad. Uh, they, they steal some um, alien spaceships uh-huh. at one point, mm-hmm. right? And they've got these like fusion drives in them. They yeah. can go really fast. That's all they do. They can go fast. They're stuck in this like tornado of ships. They're being controlled by the, the queen. There's a queen in, oh, of in course the there series. Is. Of course yeah. there is. Right? Yeah. And up until then, they're attacking the queen. She's not controlling their ship. And then all of a sudden, when she needs the ships to circle, it's like, oh, no, our ship's taken out. I'm like, okay, that's just straight convenience. The plot yeah. needed them. Uh-huh. Then they go, how do we get out of it? Hit the fusion drive. Okay. So if two planes hit each other, what happens? They blow up. They both blow up. They destroy, yeah. In this one, they kick on the NOS, and they start <laughs> plowing through other ships. And I'm like, it doesn't protect the it ship and make, make them, you, yeah. it yeah. just, just goes faster. The, it makes the collision more violent. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, it was literal plot armor. It was anyone in these yeah. ships is fine. Any of the other ships are just fodder. And I'm like, it's the same ship. It's the same structure. Like, yeah. that's not how any of this would work. And if you, if you hit something going 100 miles an hour or something going 100 miles hits you, it's the exact same amount of yeah. force. <laughs> but the 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 other thing too, watching that new one is like when you look at all the characters, it's just not as special as this one. This one has such a good. Um, it's not just the the arc of their characters, but like the the portrayal of those characters from each of these actors. Even though some of them are playing kind of a stereotype, like Will Smith is the mm-hmm. snarky well, guy. I mean, we all know that Jeff Goldblum is just playing Jeff Jeff Goldblum. Right, it's the only role he knows. It's, he's doing his thing, and I don't know what Harry Connick Jr. is doing, Big Daddy. <laughs> that whole <laughs> character, I'm like, what what was this on paper? <laughs> like, what were y'all thinking? I mean, there is the because he's his uh, pilot buddy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there's the whole comedy about it. We're like. Steven, this, this is a ring. And the other dude walks in the locker room and walks back out. (laughs) That's a good moment right there. There's just so many, he's just calling him Big Daddy. I'm like, is that his call sign? Or is this just like something you call this guy? What's happening here? They call him the Reverend, like. Yeah, like, but that's not his name on the side of the plane. I'm like, nothing in this matches. What's (laughs) happening? Um, But yeah, compared to the old one, the new one just doesn't have any of that spark that you get with a lot of these characters. Well, again, I I really do think it comes down to the passion of the production. Yeah. Because you could definitely tell that at this point in time, like, you know, he had an idea of what he wanted from the film and he just made it happen where coming back to a franchise, you know, 20 years later or whatever is really just to search for more money. Unless, right, unless you yeah. have just a stellar unless, unless idea. you were Top Gun Maverick, which is still a search, for, still more a money, search for more money. Right. But it's just done with the passion to make it cor- like right. Well, that's one of those things like, where you have to have just a stellar idea mm-hmm. where it's just one day you're doing an interview and you're like, oh, that's it. Oh, man, that's I should it. be doing this. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you come back to it. it it's just money. That's yeah. all you're doing. Well, because like, like, yeah, no, go ahead. The, the biggest difference, too, is like writing. Like, mm-hmm. it's not that the, this. The well, 96 version has great writing. There's definitely some cheesy lines in it. And well, some I don't, it's not even the cheesy lines. I really do. The, cause we've talked about this before about like how TV shows now, they basically just tell you what the characters yeah. are thinking because there's no nuance to it because right. people's ha- people have such short attention spans now because we have phones. We have yeah. all these other things that are taking our attention where back then you had a TV and you had a stereo. Right. Yeah. And you were I looking for a computer forward. if you were rich, but yeah. But like, I don't know. To me, it's just the writing is, it's like, I would have never previously been like Independence Day is an amazing a paragon movie. of storytelling. But now that I've seen so many more modern blockbusters, it makes you realize that how like, even in the nineties on what was ostensibly like a dumb, fun action mm-hmm. movie. Right. It still it was had competently competent, yeah. written and like mm-hmm. the plot makes mm-hmm. sense and everything is, you know, there's no seams. There's it's no yeah. like, believable. They're all all yeah. these leaps are believable. And characters you, are their character throughout. They don't have like these random changes in character mm-hmm. just to fit the scene. Well, and, and I think part of it too is, and, and this still happens in a lot of other films. I'm not saying that this is uh, unique to the '90s or something right. like that. Yeah. But when the character is a fully developed person, they have moments where they're the funny person, or where they make the mistake, or right. where they're the butt of the joke, or where mm-hmm. they're serious. Or a lot of times you have characters who it's like, well, you're one note, you're the funny the, the, guy. Yeah, they're yeah. the archetype, and then that's the only that's thing they get they to get. do. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. these characters, they all have moments and interactions. It feels natural because sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's not funny, sometimes it's not. Right. It, and it just hits differently, because like Randy Quaid's character, right? Like he has all these moments where you can laugh at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then at the end, he has a moment where you're just like, oh. Well, yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean, it's the same thing with, you know, I'll say, like, Lord of the Rings, where you have, mm-hmm. like, all four hobbits, and each one 
has their own version of comedy and seriousness and everything like that. Right. And every like throughout the trilogy, you get that they stick all with of it. these moments, and you and they're character people. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. not just like these archetypes that just exist. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we have been gushing about Independence Day. Well deserved, <laughs> I think. I think. Would you guys is... recommend it? Oh, absolutely. Well, would you rewatch? Well, it? So I'm, actually, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually genuinely curious for mm-hmm. our international listeners. You should definitely talk to it or mention it on Discord whenever you or, listen or to the episode. When you see the ep- the post on socials yeah the comment down uh, there. I'm, I'm genuinely curious of what you guys whenever you watch this initially thought being from another country because like obviously like independence day is a u.s holiday it so is so whenever and, like and we look some, at it, we're like for, a US for, some, holiday, US. for some parts of the world it's a it's a direct middle finger to them exactly yeah <laughs> so I, i'm genuinely curious at what you thought of because clearly it did really well in the international box office yeah which coincidentally uh so the composer is british mm. And uh, I don't know if it was uh, Devlin or Emmerich, but one of them made the comment of, you know, you can always rely on a British composer to make, to write some of the most patriotic music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, all right. Well, it does sound like we're starting to wind down, but before we let you go, we got to talk about another way to be patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's to support spoilers intended on Patreon. Yes, for just one dollar a month, you get access to all of our bonus content. You can vote in our Patreon picks polls. You get access to our commentaries. You get everything for one dollar. Yep, we have great bonus episodes uh, where we talk about or we talk I, with Chat GPT. No, no, no! It's Independence Day. We oh yes, fight we fight monarchs and then we fight monarchs. Yes, in the most American way in possible. The most American in a fist way fight. possible. Yes. Just no by looking at bar. their, we look at their portraits and decide, could we take them or not? Yep. yep. And, the, and the answer, spoiler for the British, is typically yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless it's a queen, then no. They are, are all are very couple, hard women. Very questionable, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all righty. Well, as always, follow us on socials, leave us a review wherever you're listening now, and share us with a friend. But until next time, I'm Stephen. I'm Andrew. And I'm Ryan. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs>